Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders. This week we're going to be talking about gambling in the Old West. Just a friendly little game of cards. We could do that. Dan, are you cheating again? Are you calling me a card cheat? Damn straight I am. Uh, sorry viewers. <clears throat> gambling is one of those activities Hey, Carl, stop shooting. The scene's over. Gambling is one of those activities where the tide can turn in an instant. One second you're rolling in the dough, the next you're poorer than a church mouse. Of course, if you play your cards right, you might have an ace in the hole. Okay, I'm, I'm done with the metaphors for now. Oh, what a relief. Well, finish your tea, sir. In 18th century America, the game of poker was born. Although versions of it were played in Europe, the betting system is unique to this country. The Mississippi River is where this game really blossomed, and by the 19th century was one of the most popular card games in the entire U.S. It was also one of those games that attracted cheaters and card sharps. What do you got? Uh... Nine of clubs. Oh, thanks for reminding me, fellas. Prior to the Civil War, there were no numbers or letters on cards. Indexes, as they were called, started to become popular during the Frontier Era. These indexes were smaller than today's, mainly to thwart the cheaters. Roulette, which means little wheel, was popular in the larger gaming establishments. Well, you don't see that every day. Players bet either red or black, odd or even, or a specific number or range of numbers on the wheel. The wheel is spun in one direction and a ball is spun in the opposite direction. Where the ball drops is the winner. Oh boy, red five, red five, I win! <laughs> Faro, an alternative spelling of Faro, was a card game brought over from Europe. Players bet on one or more cards or could bet the high card. The cards were dealt from a shoe. Uh, no, not that kind of a shoe. A shoe is a box that the dealer would deal cards from, which made cheating unlikely. Uh, there's yours, and here's mine. The backs of the cards in a Pharaoh deck typically had drawings of tigers on them, which became so closely associated with the game that playing it was called bucking the tiger. I pity the fool, and I will destroy any man who tries to take what I got. Now, it wasn't just table games in the Old West. People bet on races and fights, both human and animal, by the way. <laughs> This era brought about a number of pro gamblers, including Bat Masterson, Poker Alice, Doc Holliday, Soapy Smith, and Lottie Denno. Many of them were always armed because they tended to win a lot and, well, you know how sore losers can get. Feeling lucky? You wanna play a hand? Sure. Cut this car. No problem. Ah! Wow, did you see how high that blood went? I did. That was impressive. He'll be okay, right? I mean, he was all thumbs anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, he'll be all right. <laughs> Folks, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Don't roll your eyes at me. Ah! <laughs> Here, <buddy. laughs> Boom! Airplanes in the Old West. <laughs> Next. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs>